Advanced Technology The MICSSP has at least two large space stations in Earth's orbit as well as a number of manned satellites. They are roughly circular in shape and are large space stations with enough facilities for many people to work in various labs and so forth. They are also reported to possess floating aircraft carriers that look exactly the same as what we saw in the Avengers and Captain America, the Winter Soldier. They have black triangular craft that can travel around our solar system as well as other stealth looking varieties. This technology makes them feel like feel that if anything else was going on in our solar system, they would be able to see it. When they see the crafts from other programs or have any of a number of ET races, they are simply told that these crafts are ours. They are told that they are not on a need-to-know basis about that particular program and not to speak about their sighting with anyone. It is very compartmentalized. The Cabal is a very, very intelligent group. I don't think so. Anyway, they built the MICSSP from the very beginning to be disclosed at some point as a protective deception to hide the deeper level SSP. If anyone in the MIC SSP ranks made unwanted technological or informational breakthroughs, they would be quietly plugged out, just as occurs here in our own level of the cover-up. Therefore, no one in the MIC SSP will successfully discover portals that take them outside our solar system as one of many examples. Certain areas are cordoned off to them as no-fly zones so that they do not see the advanced ET civilizations that already exist in our solar system. If someone sees something they shouldn't have and the idea that it is one of ours doesn't stick, they very likely would disappear or, or be reassigned. The Cabal knew that if the people in the MIC SSP truly believed what they were being told was the whole and complete truth, none of them could ever threaten the partial disclosure scenario. They could come forward and fight vigorously against any alternative view of reality because they believed in their hearts and soul that they had been given the whole and complete truth. This is precisely what was happening with Sigmund, the commanding MIC officer who interrogated me as we were as we will reveal in a minute. They believe we are alone. The MICSSP are told that we cannot travel outside our solar system. This is due to gravitational and energetic conditions at the boundary of our helosphere that make any escape impossible with their current technology. NASA has already reviewed gravitational abnormalities with our pioneer deep space probes as they travel closer to the boundary of our solar system, setting the stage for this announcement. The MIC folks are also told that there is no need for us to go anywhere else as we are already surrounded by an embarrassment of riches beyond our wildest dreams. There are many impressive prehistoric intelligent ruins to explore here. From what they call the ancient builder race, the oldest of these ruins dates back more than 1.8 billion years. Most of their members believe that any ETs have long since come and gone from our solar system. The other exception is time travelers from Earth's own future who have come back and visited us. Different levels of knowledge depending upon the group. The MIC SSP is made up of different military and intelligence groups that have varying levels of knowledge of ETs. Some think they, there are only four or five groups visiting us. Some don't think any have been here for thousands of years. The top brass, uh, 
the top brass of each branch have basic knowledge of 50 plus other ET groups that have visited us. This knowledge goes back to the 60s and was standard info in the briefings then for NATO and the DoD. It is much more complicated than can be summarized in a paragraph or two. The mid-level narrative. The mid-level personnel have been told that some humans who have time traveled here from our own future now look like grays. This is due to evolutionary changes from having lived underground for thousands of years. One of the partial disclosure narratives was dis was designated to focus on this idea, namely that all the human-looking and gray-looking ETs come from competing timelines in our future. The high-ups usually know, know about a handful of ETs that are here now, that they are ordered to keep silent about it. Some MIC SSP groups believe that we are all the blood descendants to varying degrees and pre-Atlantean human ET refugees that they call the pre-Adamites, as we will discuss. This is also a key feature of the belief systems of the various cabal groups at the higher levels. The cabal groups believe they have significantly more pre-Adamite blood than the rest of us and formed royal bloodlines and elite ruling castes as a result. Energetic changing in our solar system. As Wilco revealed in the Ascension Mysteries, one of his insiders has worked with the MIC SSP and has and has been thoroughly educated in their views as we are explaining them here. The MIC SSP people are also aware that an energetic change is occurring in our solar system. They expect that this will lead to a massive release from the sun in our near future. The classic movie year 2001 was intended to pave the way for the MIC program's eventual disclosure. If a sufficiently massive sighting or a well-publicized data dump from a whistleblower got traction in the mainstream media, the MIC SSP could have been revealed many years earlier. Year 2001 and Year 2010 installed all the key pieces of information we would be told over time in the aftermath of that eventual disclosure. If you try to explain to the MIC SSP that a much more advanced space program is operating around us, it is akin to blasphemy, a major religion in front of its devoted followers. pre atomized in the ice. Now let's return to our scene where I am now on the MIC SSP craft, hearing what Sigmund was telling me. Sigmund revealed that we had been stationed at several classified military installations in Antarctica. He had spent time in the very area where the Ansha Inner Earth Group had taken me on a reconnaissance flight. He stated that an extremely ancient series of cities had been discovered flush, frozen, deep under the ice shelf. He confirmed that there were also many animals and pre-Adamites preserved in the ice. He described the pre-Adamites as beings with elongated skulls with strangely proportioned bodies that were obviously not designated for Earth's gravity and atmospheric pressure. When we combine this with what Gonzalez told me earlier and the academic research they were compiled in the Ascension Mysteries. It does appear that some of these groups were giants by our standards. Other hybrid groups may have been bred to have more conventional heights and or adapted to Earth's gravity over time by becoming shorter. The history of the pre-Adamites. According to Sigmund, this pre-Adamite group 
had apparently arrived here from another planet in our solar system that was no longer habitable. They arrived here approximately 55,000 to 65,000 years ago and began to create hybrids of their species and a developing human population. It sounded like the fallen angels, Nephilim, the giants. This fit beautifully with what um, concealers and others had already disclosed, which in turn became the central narrative of the second half of David's The Ascension Mysteries. What we now see as Antarctica was the seemingly mythical lost island of Atlantis. The Blush Map from 1754 depicts accurate subclasial topography of um, Antarctica. No one in modern times even saw the continent itself until 1820. Insiders tell us Boas, Orwanius, and other maps were copied over from ancient scrolls in the Vatican Library. The Earth shifted on its rotational axis, perhaps due to a nuclear war and the water that inundated. The continent quickly fresh frozen into a gigantic ice shelf. Sigmund stated that the hybrid survivors of this catastrophe, who were living on other continents at the time of the Great Flood, completely lost access to their ancient cities for over 10,000 years. This is exactly the fallen angels and the Netherlands. I don't know why they classified them as the AET group here. These beings then began to breed with the human populations in the regions they were stationed in at the time of the disaster. One major faction of pre adamites was constrained to the Americas, while the other survived in Europe, Africa, and Asia. Tompkins, Aldrin, the Drago, and Antarctica. The 29 embedded German spies Tompkins interviewed during World War II confirmed the Nazi were working with a violent, aggressive reptilian race. This group is humanoid, but with reptilian features. They have been called the Saurian or the Draco and pose the biggest problem for everyone in our region of the galaxy. Surprisingly, the Draco have a central base of operations in our solar system, including huge under ice facilities in Antarctica. Hypothetical examples only. No one we know has seen the inside of these bases. This makes Buzz Aldrin's latest alleged tweet extremely interesting. We do now know that this tweet was disinformation, but the contents are still important to analyze. We can prove that we had just visited Antarctica while wearing a shirt encouraging us to get to Mars ASAP. We did hear that he has um, he was there to tour the pre adamite ruins that are now on the verge of being disclosed to us as part of this transition plan. This info begins with him allegedly trading a peg of an alleged Antarctica pyramid with the words, We are all in danger. It is evil itself. If this had actually been real and not another internet hoax, it strongly suggested that he was briefed on the existence of the Draco, perhaps off the record, and it really gave him a heart attack. So the fallen angels are actually imprisoned underneath the ice in Antarctica. Excavation has finally been allowed. My contacts in the SSP Alliance revealed that the Draco have finally allowed the U.S. to excavate new pre adamite archaeological sites under the Antarctica ice. They have also granted permission for the small number of surviving pre adamites to access these areas once again. These pre adamite people look and sound just like us except that they have elongated skulls that they must keep hidden if they are ever seen in public. They will ask me how many of these people still live on Earth. As of now, I do not have any clear intel on their numbers, but it is likely in the thousands, if not more.
The amount of ancient technology and information that has been found preserved in huge libraries under the Antarctic ice is staggering. Another meeting with the Mayans. The Mayan breakaway group started out in Mesoamerica, and thanks to a successful ET contact, they were able to migrate off planet. They have since become advanced enough to develop a unique. Technology that appears to be based on the use of stone and consciousness. They act as a healing group that have provided treatment to Gonzales and many other survivors of SSP enslavement and torture. Advanced tech in ancient ruins. Gonzales soon moved to another topic. He stated that Cabal proxies had discovered pieces of ancient technologies hidden in time capsules in many of the ancient Sumerian ruins. These proxy agents completely raised these ancient ruins to the ground looking for these time capsules. Sumerian ruins for illustrative purposes only. Notice height of giant men. These groups not only found several pieces of technology inside the walls of these ruins, they also located some new sites buried below them that were much more ancient. He stated that these artifacts were being stored in Mosul, Iraq at the moment. He stated that one of the reasons such a vigorous battle is occurring in Mosul at this time is because various groups are fighting to recover these artifacts. After these historical sites were destroyed, the Alliance sent operatives to other similar sites across the planet to do sonar scans and try to locate more of these time capsules. He stated that they were doing so in the dead of the night and were using very advanced technologies to try to detect other anomalies around these ancient sites. The pre-Adamites want control. According to Gonzalez, the ancient technologies that were discovered in Iraq had belonged to this pre-Adamite group. This group wants the return of these technical artifacts immediately, considering them to be their private and personal property. However, certain professions who are now in possession of them will not will not turn them over. These are Earth human proxy groups that the Cabal had sent on the behalf of the surviving pre Adamites. They got the cosmic equivalent of gold lust when they saw the treasure. What further complicates matters is that there are two different royal bloodlines among these pre-Adamites. These two groups are in a type of competition over the control of the financial and political systems of various countries. As I have said before, the people we are now con calling pre-Adamites or have psychopathic characteristics by our normal definition of the term. The elongated miter hats everyone wears in the Vatican are one of the ways they have been able to conceal themselves while still operating amongst us. The surviving pre Adamites apparently have blue eyes for illustrative purposes only. Weakening of the Cabal Coalition Godzilla stated that this argument over the pre Adamites runes meant there was an obvious awakening of the Cabal's coalition. This split in the ranks of these global syndicates was being exploited by the Alliance. It seems that many of these cabal groups now see that their organization is about to be fully exposed and brought to justice. The disclosures they mentioned in part one did not happen by chance. They are the direct result of the hard work of the Alliance through outlets like WikiLeaks. It appears that many of these people are positioning themselves to cooperate with the Alliance during the prosecution phase. This, of course, is a very helpful thing. Meetings with the Earth Alliance By this point, we were getting fairly close to the time of the U.S. Presidents presidential election, which was indeed extremely contentious, as David had opened up with in part one.
I had already been told many months ago that the SSP alliance was in support of either Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump winning the election. Both of these men are aware of the cabal, are not a part of it, and want to see it taken down for the betterment of humanity. Just day be, just days before the election, certain allies I had in the FBI, DHS, and FEMA reconnected with me. They were very excited because their data showed that Trump was likely to win. Hack attacks from a panic cabal. This next phase of insider contact started a few days ago, a few days after I published my last update. It began with a series of hacking attempts on my home computers. Three of the computers that I use for work began to pop up. Intrusion alerts. I disconnected from the internet and ran a few security scans on them out of an abundance. Abundance of caution. I found out these cabal groups have apparently been in a state of panic for weeks, as more and more has been leaked about their involvement in pedophilia and sex slave rings. They are also organ harvesting their young victims to sell on the black market. These are just a few of the crimes being committed. The FBI has had enough. The FBI has been quietly investigating these deplorable crimes for decades. Davis's own insiders independently confirmed this to him, and it has now gone public, as we saw in part one. The FBI investigators had brought this evidence to several attorney generals in the past, only to have them tell the FBI to close their investigations. The FBI soon realized that major changes would have to occur before they would ever be allowed to bring these people to justice. The more they investigated, the more prominent and powerful names began to pop up. It appears that this sex slave and pedophile. Rings have been associated with close to a third of everyone working in government organizations within the USA and the EU. It was determined that any attempt to prosecute them would be met by roadblocks. Um, okay, so these FBI investigators、um, should be the white hats in the government that.、Uh, Have been working with President Trump ever since he got elected. This is one key reason why the alliance favored Trump. This appears to be one of the main reasons most of the FBI was behind Donald Trump in the election process. They knew the alliance was in favor of Trump becoming the next president. The FBI have been aware of the alliance for some time. The FBI believed that if Trump won the election, they would finally have the opportunity to bring this evidence to the to an attorney general who would actually prosecute. This was such a contentious election process that it caused a huge amount of anxiety for people on both sides of the political parties. I think that's because、uh, that's why President Trump recently just we as、um, created a special space force,、um, not only to replace the Air Force, which is the U.S. Air Force already compromised by the cabal, but also、um, to communicate with this alliance. The following night. I was as shocked as everyone else to see Trump actually win the election. I was able to confirm through other sources that these three individuals were not attempting to discredit me. That I then contacted them for a full download. I found out that Soros is under investigation by the FBI, the White Hats within the FBI, not the whole FBI. For all he did prior to the election years before, and his involvement in the current riots, Obama appears to be willing to agree to not pardon Hillary if some of his legacy is preserved somehow. It appears Trump and Obama are keeping that option open, but I doubt it. 
will occur after hearing all of the POTUS ties to the Clinton investigation that keep popping up. There is a very unsettled mood among the, the establishment types. This was not supposed to happen. They tried to rake the voting, but underestimated the voter turnout for Trump. David captured a photograph of the front page of Huffington Post, now controlled by Verizon, on election day. It showed a 98% chance of Hillary winning and a 1.7% chance uh, for Trump. Full hacking would not be sufficient. It turned out that there were so many voters for Trump that it outpaced the Soros-owned voting machine glitches that they hoped would seal the election. They had calculated that changing approximately one out of 100 votes for Hillary in the key swing states would be sufficient, and they were wrong. I was clearly told that Soros was financing most of the riots right now, as I just said. There are also lots of revenge attacks occurring against Russia from cabal type groups. I found out that things are very bumpy right now between the alliance and the cabal. They were not supposed to lose the POTUS position. Very sickening information. As they were shared in part one, Dr. Steve Pisanik revealed that the alliance was behind the Pizzagate emails. They knew exactly what we were going to find when they leaked them. The general population is being prepared for some very sickening information about all levels of inference in the U.S. government. We are going to find out how many influential people from both political parties in the U.S. and the EU have been a part of this massive pedophilia ring. This sex slave ring has also been used as a device to blackmail powerful people into paying large sums of money as well as to influence how they make policy decisions. Once these uncomfortable truths are disclosed, society will not only be ready for more of the truth, they will take to the streets to demand it. Once we see how much is hiding below the surface and that this is just the tip of the iceberg, it will no longer be so easy for any power group to control the people. Antarctica and Cabal Surrender Various world political and religious leaders have been brought down to Antarctica in the last year. The new archaeological finds are a major reason for this. They are excitedly taking tours of the findings. According to sources, the Cabal plans on fleeing to an island in New Zealand, certain areas of South uh, America and Antarctica. If so, these meetings may very well be a signal to the Alliance that key members of this secret Earth syndicates are preparing to escape justice from an angry American populace. The Cabal had believed they could steal the election and once again escape their fates. They were wrong. Perhaps the strangest development of all was when U.S. top Diplomat John Kerry flew down to Antarctica right on election day. A fairly prolonged power outage may occur. I saw that this could be a synchronistic warning of a mass power outage that would occur as we head into the final phase of the cabal takedown. There have been long-standing rumors of an approximately two-week power outage, perhaps a bit longer, as the alliance goes through the final stages of arresting key cabal operatives. This is primarily intended to prevent them from fleeing and to minimize panic and civilian casualties during the arrest process. Since the end of last year, we've received a warning from the government on its website saying that uh, prepare for power outage. Approximate period of time will be up to at least six months. It could go longer because the high-level cabal indictment is coming up soon, unraveling very quickly. David. 
It does also appear that the cabal will create a financial collapse to further try to ruin Trump if nothing else works. It is now they are trying to create a financial collapse by、um, setting fire and causing the oil refineries with explosions in Saudi Arabia, Italy, and Mexico、uh, for the、um, for the past few days, and then、um, now they. Controlling the Iran and、uh, have Iran to issue warning to at least U.S. They are prepared for the、um, all-out war. Let's see how it plays out because I'm sure the cabal will、um, trigger another casualty to、um, push everybody. Towards the Third World War, Pizza Gate was the number one story on the internet yesterday, as evinced by it being the top of the day. This whole thing is unraveling very quickly. The more the mainstream media keeps saying there is no evidence and no victims whatsoever, the more the kids doing this are、uh, waking up and fighting even harder. Most of the agreements have been made. Just. About all of the things we talked about that were being negotiated between the alliance and the cabal have now been agreed upon mostly. In the meantime, prepare to see tons of elite connected people resigning from their jobs. They will not flee the country, of course, but will immigrate to a safe zone out of protest of. Trump being president and warning all of their hard work, etc.